Living in this awesome, mad, huge world means being a part of a big mix of people. Now we can travel, either in real life or right here on the internet, to the furthest reaches of the planet. There we can find wonderful and strange people and customs, sometimes scary, sometimes fascinating, and many others whose lives really aren't so different or weird after all. So let's poke our noses into other people's business for a bit. From terrifying masked ghost warriors to death curses on paradise islands, here are 15 of the scariest tribes you don't want to meet. Number 15, the San Bushman tribes. Known by outsiders as San, San, or Bushmen, the people are actually members of various indigenous groups including Tu, Ko, and Kazaa-speaking people. The terms San or Bushmen are disrespectful words from the Dutch of Afrikaner language, basically a rude way of saying gatherer without property. The tribe lives across the Kalahari Desert in an area which is part of present-day Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, and Zambia. But this incredible ancient way of life is under constant attack. The tribes are being forced to move on from their historic lands and into resettlement camps. Governments in Botswana have denied the tribes access to water, removed them from their land, and damaged their traditional existence, forcing nomadic people to keep livestock and set up home in permanent camps. It's claimed that the government's actions are a way to preserve the fragile ecosystem and wildlife of the Kalahari. But maybe the people that have lived alongside and as part of that ecosystem for as long as these tribes might just know a thing or two about preserving it though. Just a suggestion. I'm sure that moving the indigenous people out of the area has absolutely nothing to do with the hugely valuable diamond mining industry in the area. I don't know about you, but in this case, I reckon the way that these people are treated is scarier than their ancient hunting and gathering nomadic lifestyle to begin with. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Chimbu Skeleton Tribes The name itself does sound a little bit scary, that's true. Anything with skeletons can be a bit of a concern, but as we've already learned, the names of many indigenous people are often forced on them by outsiders, and frequently these names are misguided or even really just plain rude. So we need to do a little bit more digging. The traditions of this tribe remain mostly unknown in outside circles, and since they were first encountered by Westerners in 1934, which was then quickly followed by the introduction of Christian missions and coffee plantations, much of the tribe's history and culture has been eroded. The Chimbu tribe of Papua New Guinea use incredible black and white body paint, costume, and dance to make themselves appear as skeletons. Originally, this was part of the way that the Chimbu psychologically intimidated their enemies, and may have also been a way for the people to try to harness a supernatural force. Mmm, spooky. The mystery behind these remarkable designs and their uses has definitely made the Chimbu a source of fascination to outsiders. Perhaps that's why traditional rituals are now only seen as part of celebrations that are gawked at by visitors. Number 13. Asaro Tribe Mudmen These fearsome looking masks are not something you would want to meet in the dark. The Asaro Mudmen of Papua New Guinea are an ancient people. The Asaro are also known as the Holosa, which means ghosts. They have no written history, but lots of stories and spoken word passed down through generations. One of the stories goes that there was a wedding, and the tribe all wore their best costumes for the ceremony. However, one man did not have the clothing, and as the tale goes, he took a string bag, cut out eye holes, and dipped the bag along with his body in mud. He then arrived at the wedding dressed in this wild looking costume where the other people took one look at him and ran away fearing that he was actually a ghost. 
Now I can see why they were frightened, because these masks can be super creepy. The story then goes that the incident gave the tribespeople the idea of making scary masks and using mud as body paint in order to make themselves more intimidating and terrifying to their enemies. The costume is not really supposed to start a fight, but actually to just put the enemy off. So although you might be terrified to meet a masked Asaro mudman, you are supposed to run away from them. Number 12. The Chukchi Tribes the Chukchi people, known as something that I can't pronounce, live on Chukchi Peninsula in northeastern Siberia in Russia. These freezing and dangerous landscapes are super challenging for people to simply stay alive. The Chukchi, however, are really tough, and their culture and customs are all part of what it takes to live in one of the most difficult places to remain. The Chukchi religious beliefs are based around the natural world, with rituals that involve shamans, often in magic mushroom-assisted trances, being channels for the spirits to speak through and casting spells. So I guess this could seem a little bit scary, but probably mostly a little trippy. They also have some other rituals which include those that surround death, but then so does every other culture in the world, right? When a person dies, the body's watched over just to ensure that the person doesn't come back to life. This actually seems like a fairly sensible practice to most of us, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. When it's fully established that the person has definitely died, then the rituals of preparation for a funeral will begin. Perhaps the least scary part of this tribe's culture is that, despite food and other resources being pretty hard to come by, generosity is a very important part of their lives. And the people will share all that they have, even with a stranger. So if you happen to be lost in the Siberian tundra, the Chukchi would take you in and give you shelter and food, no matter who you happen to be. Number 11. The Night Marchers Tribes If you find yourself in Hawaii on a dark night, you may see something that could make your blood run cold. But you probably won't survive to tell the tale. This is the legend of the Hawaiian Night Marchers, a genuinely scary story of ghost warriors and death curses. It's believed that all throughout the islands of Hawaii, there are spirits of ancient warriors who, on the nights of the last four moon phases before a new moon, will march through their old lands. In tales of folklore and even some present-day accounts, these terrifying apparitions march at night to the beat of drums, some carrying spears or even flaming torches. It's said that you must never look at them. And folklore says that those who have seen them have died following their ghostly encounter or very occasionally might have been spared. It's believed that if you're a descendant of one of the night marchers, then they'll not take you to join their ranks. But if you're not one of the special few with the Night Marcher blood in your veins, then you'll be forever cursed to march along with them. If you do find yourself on a deserted Hawaiian road late at night and you hear the slow, steady beat of drums, perhaps the trumpet of a conch shell and the glimpse of the glimmer of torches, then there's a single thing that some folk reckon might just save you. Apparently, the legend has it that if you do strip completely naked, lay down directly in front of the night marchers, and maybe even let out a little bit of pee, which, you know, it's probably not all that hard to wet yourself when you encounter a ghost, then they might just spare you. It sounds a little weird to me, though. It may sound like a crazy ghost story, but I'm not one who wants to find out if I'm a descendant from the Night Walkers or not in this particular fashion. Would you? Number 10. The Carubo Tribe one of the groups of indigenous people of Brazil, known to outsiders as the Carubo, are some of the most isolated people in the world. The Carubo tribe is very small, with only about 150 people. And when you think of Amazonian tribes, you probably think about those old movie depictions with the sort of adventure stories and retro comics and books that you might have on your shelf. You know, poison darts, great jungle hunting skills. Well, those are actually not too far from the truth when it comes to the Carubo. The Carubo are also called Casateros in Portuguese, I think, which means clubbers. Not the partying kind, but the weapon-wielding kind. 
So this probably has something to do with their reputation for violence, because nicknames do tend to stick. Although to be honest, it seems that the violence is just as likely to be done to the tribe's people by outsiders rather than the other way around. It is true though that they hunt with poison darts and fight with clubs, so I guess you're going to need to imagine an Indiana Jones kind of scenario. So go right ahead. Jock, start the engine. Number 9. The Surma Tribes the Surma of Ethiopia have a unique style of fighting, known as stick fighting. The two fighters, with bodies decorated with chalk mixed in water, are armed with a six-foot wooden pole. It's pretty hefty and weighs a couple of pounds. The long pole is then held at the bottom, and the aim of the sport is to whack your opponent with this massive stick as many times as possible to get him to fall down. When your opponent hits the deck, they are then eliminated. The prize at the end of the tournament is unusual. The winner is then carried on a platform to a group of girls and gets to pick which one he's going to marry. So young men are selected for their stick fighting skills, and the young women, the size of their lip plates. The lower lip is pierced and then slowly stretched over the course of a year, using bigger and bigger discs. <laughs> Ouch! The family of a woman with a big lip plate can ask for a price as much as 50 cattle for her to be married. I like big plates, and I cannot lie. Number 8. The Agori Tribes Depicted as crazed and cannibalistic, the Agoris are a small group of extremely devout Hindus who have taken this devotion to the max. On the banks of the river Ganges is the vibrant and extremely holy city of Varanasi, where Hindus travel to die. It sounds strange, but the Ganges is a significant place. The river is believed to be the god Ganja. So being able to die in Varanasi and to be cremated on the banks of the Ganges is the most devoted way to be close to the gods when you leave this world for the next one. The Agori people perform their rituals in the area around the Ganges where cremations are carried out and dead bodies are pushed into the river. The deeply religious Agori believe that everything was created by the gods, and therefore everything's beautiful. To them, this means that nothing is too low or basic not to be considered beautiful. This even includes eating human flesh or even their excrement and rubbing their bodies in the cremated ashes of the dead. They perform these sacred rituals as a way to be closer to their god, Shiva. Number 7. The Cargo Cults of Tana Tribe Worshipping an American soldier from World War II might not seem like the likeliest starting point for a religion, but that seems to be how it goes for the John Frum movement on the South Pacific island of Tana in Venuatu. Cargo cults are religious groups that believe that by performing ritual worship, a technologically advanced culture will bring plentiful goods or cargo to its worshippers. In 1941, the United States Army stationed a huge load of troops and all the supplies that could go along with them in this area. The people are very poor, and it's understood that upon seeing the extraordinary amount of stuff or cargo that the American GIs had brought to the island during the Second World War, the followers of the cargo cult of Tana believed that the gods were delivering it to them. The story goes that an American, introducing himself to the local people saying, I'm John from America, is where the John From movement came from. A religion that was created out of miscommunication, perhaps? John From Day is celebrated on February 15th every year. They fly the American flag, worshippers paint USA under their chests, and they use wooden guns to perform army-style drill dances. Another key part of the celebration is the creation of a landing strip with the hopes that it will coax a return of John From and his cargo. Number 6. The Sentinelese Tribe Keep out! The Sentinelese are the most isolated people on the planet, actively rejecting any contact with the outside world. They may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years. Complete isolation on a small island, though, in the Indian Ocean also means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory. 
and have killed anyone that's poked their nose into their business. Sounds kind of harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by disease that were imported from other places, any germ or virus that they might catch from an outsider would most likely wipe them out. Obviously, it's tricky to understand much of anything about a tribe that you can't get near without receiving an arrow through the chest, so all that's really known about this tribe is what's been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that are carefully moored further than an arrow's reach off the coast. In 1880, a British expedition landed on the island and discovered the villages and houses were abandoned, presumably by the tribe, having seen them invading and forcing them to hide themselves. However, the explorers did come across an old couple and a few small children. In the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, the British then kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. The Sentinelese quickly became sick with disease, and the older people perished. The children were then returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no small wonder that the outsiders are met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication were made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, but most were rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that it's probably safest for the tribe if they're just left in peace. Number 5. The Korowai People Tribe This Indonesian tribe are actually famous. Despite being pretty isolated and living harmoniously with nature in their rainforest home, the Korowai people have hit the headlines all over the place with tabloids looking for sensational stories of wild places and strange rituals. The newspaper's dreams came true when they could point a spotlight on the unusual culture of the Korowai listing cannibalism and witchcraft among their favorite hobbies. But as is always the case with tabloid headlines, you do have to look a little deeper to get a real sense of what the story actually might be. <laughs> In a remote area of the Indonesian rainforest, the Korowai build their remarkable houses between 8 and 15 meters off the ground, sometimes in trees or even on tall stilts. The reason is said to be that evil spirits only stay around on the ground, so building up high keeps the family safe. It also offers great protection from animals and lots of insects, as well as invading humans. They are a religious people. Their beliefs include reincarnation as well as respect for their ancestors, and a belief that some of their people even have magical abilities, able to influence luck and detect black magic. This element of their culture is most probably where the accusations of cannibalism and witchcraft come from, and in the past, there may have been some violent ends to disagreements within the tribe. Nowadays, however, most issues are pretty much solved by giving each other gifts. I guess that offering a bunch of flowers to your neighbor, well, that's probably a lot less dramatic than eating them, but probably makes less mess as well. Not so good for tabloid headlines, though. Number 4. The Huli Wigman the Huli Wigmen of Papua New Guinea are extremely hair conscious. Their dress, both daily and ceremonially, revolves around their extraordinary wigs. The styles and variety of wigs that they create would not be out of place at Fashion Week, and when combined with their fancy traditional dress and bright yellow painted faces, it's pretty unusual to say the least. There is ritual and tradition involved in the growing of the hair to make the wigs, and in the process of creating the remarkable headpieces themselves. Adolescent boys grow their hair for around 18 months at a time before it is carefully cut and used to make the artistic hair pieces. The young men may go through this process many times over in order to grow the hair for the great ceremonial wigs. There's also money to be made from growing and selling their hair to the hairdo-loving elder tribesmen. The hair is then stitched into a wooden frame, shaped into elaborate designs, and decorated with dyes and feathers. The resulting headpieces are really quite spectacular, and calling them wigs really doesn't do them justice. Number 3. The Dogen Tribe of West Africa the Dogen tribe of Mali have some of the most extraordinary knowledge about the night sky because astronomy has been passed down through thousands of years and generations of the remarkable and ancient Dogen people of West Africa. 
As a storytelling culture, with many traditions and rituals, knowledge has been transferred through art and experience. The sheer length of time that the Dogen people have inhabited the same regions and lived more or less unaffected by the outside world until the 20th century has left so much of their extraordinary culture and history intact. They've contributed extraordinary art to the world as well. Centuries-old experience of stargazing and navigation using the night sky has added to current-day scientists' work. The scariness factor for this tribe doesn't really exist. It's really just people taking care of business. Number 2. The Himba Tribe The women of the Himba Tribe of Namibia are bright red. This isn't a result of too much sun, but actually part of the tribe's traditions. The women crush the red ochre stone, combine it with butter, and then rub it all over their bodies. The mixture is part of the hygiene rituals of Himba, as they're forbidden from using water to wash themselves, likely a tradition that developed due to the scarcity of water, and it was preserved for men to only wash with. As well as the red ochre, women have discovered a way to bathe in smoke. An unusual practice also comes from a time when water was extremely scarce and they needed to remain hygienic without the precious resource. A daily smoke bath is part of the Himba women's routine now. Smoke and fire play another role in this tribe's sacred practices though. A holy fire is the way that the Himba communicate with their god. In every village, a holy fire burns at all times. This fire is also a gateway to the village and outsiders may not cross the holy line unless they've been invited in. Number 1. Kazakh Eagle Hunters Tribe In the freezing Altai Mountain in the territory that spans Kazakhstan, China, and Mongolia, the Kazakh Eagle Hunters live and hunt in an extraordinary way. The conditions are harsh, life for the tribe's people is very difficult, and following the traditions of their ancestors can be extreme. In the open plains, hunting is extremely taxing. The Kazakh eagle hunters have a traditional technique that helps them to overcome the difficult landscape and survive out in the wilds. These awesome nomadic people catch and train wild eagles to hunt for them. It sounds super dangerous and pretty difficult to be fair. Golden eagles do make great hunters. They're able to catch smaller creatures like rabbits or even foxes, and larger animals like goats and the occasional wolf. So it's no wonder why the Kazakh Eagle Hunter prize these exceptional birds so highly. The Kazakh Eagle Hunters spend their days riding horses and training eagles in the same way that their ancestors have done for centuries. This nomadic existence is tough though in some of the harshest conditions on the planet. Scary? Well, maybe if you're a golden eagle's prey, definitely. Tough as nails, without a doubt. It is such a crazy world out there, and it really makes me want to go look at some of it. So, were these tribes what you were expecting them to be? Or are they so scary after all? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.